Hey dudes, this is Brooke Thies, Debbie the Cockroach, aka Buck Girl from A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, and you're listening to Tommy Throwback Kobach on Splat from the Past. Fun fact, nothing ever offends Tommy. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my good friend, the ever-talented, hilarious, sexy Sadie Katz. Sadie Katz is coming back on the show today. She's got a um, a Hanukkah-themed um, horror movie coming out, or it's out already, I don't know yet, I'll find out, um, called Hanukkah. And um, it also stars, um, in their last roles, uh, Sid Haig and Dick Miller, and uh, she also works with PJ Souls in it and Charles Fleischer. And I can't wait to talk about it. It's going to be pretty cool. Sadie is a lot of fun, as you know. And she's always got hilarious things to say. And she's very smart as well. And I can't wait. So, uh, yeah, here is my new interview with Sadie Katz. Hello. What's up, Sadie? Oh, I don't know. Quarantine. <laughs> oh, my God. What a clusterfuck we're in, huh? We're in a clusterfuck. I, you know, it's funny. I was in bed with my fiance. I'm like, I don't know if I could do an interview. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't know what to say. It's fucking crazy. It's so scary. It's really scary. How are you doing there? Um, I'll tell you, uh, the sun is out, and I'm glad about it, you know, but I, I know that it's only temporary until winter time. The last half of winter comes back, you know? Right, right. I mean, I mean, are you in Reading? Yes. Uh, so you're in a lockdown too, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we all are. But um, because the town is so small, I mean... There's only a few places that are, like, completely closed. And yesterday I went shopping in one of the few grocery stores that's um, open right now. And, oh, my God, there was, like, nobody there. And, like, the, the, the stocking was just terrible. We're just not ready for something like this. I know my, my fiancé's mother, um, we sent her because in the morning seniors can shop alone. Uh-huh. She said she went to Whole Foods, and, I mean, you get to go to the front of the line, and there's no one in the store, and there's no food there. Oh, my God. So, I know. I, I don't know what to say. I'm like, well, I, I th- I'm like, we're fucked for a while. Yeah, but it's only temporary, yeah. though, and I think that this is going to sure. be good for everyone because, you know, ever since 9-11 and the Internet boom, everyone has become – selfish, um, just non-compassionate, and just plain greedy. And I think this is going to teach everyone to have empathy again. I, You know what? I love that you said that. Um, I, I do think that's the one thing is, like, people, you know, are used to also, like, in L.A., mm-hmm. just run around. You run around. You're always, like, on the go. And if you're not doing something every second, it's not good. And you should do films back-to-back and this. It's kind of making everyone, like, stay at home, appreciate their families. Um, you know, like, as much as we're watching the news, we understand that the news is, like, not accurate and ever-changing. Of course. And I do think it does make you go, you know, it's not just America going through this, it's the whole world. So hopefully there will be good things that come of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it will. I'm, I'm I'm very optimistic, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's good. What's your sign? What sign are you? I'm a Gemini. Oh, of course, I'm a Libra. That's such a Gemini attitude. I love that. Yeah, Gemini's and the Libras get along very well. Yeah, we do. My son's a Gemini, and he's always like pretty optimistic and like, "Why are you freaking out? It's gonna all be fine." And I'm like, "Ah, gloom, doom, yeah." Oh, Oh, great. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) So, over the last 50 years, we have seen a shitload of holiday-themed horror movies, but only now we see one about Hanukkah, like the one uh, that you have 
out. Um, so how did this movie come about for you? You know what? My girlfriend, Felissa Rose, mm-hmm. we play camp in, in a billion other movies, uh, referred me to the director, Evan. And it's, first of all, it's really great when you have a better actress who is so supportive because that's rare sometimes. Yep. <laughs> but um, what was really funny is I, you know, I play like a very young adult in this. Yeah. <laughs> so when I got the script, I was like, how, like, how am I going to do this? But um, I've been worked it out, and, you know, they lit me well, and I had great makeup and stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I got it through another actress friend of mine. Um, you know Felissa, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, of course, everyone knows her. So <laughs> she referred me and said, oh, Sadie would be perfect for Rachel. And, and um, so we went from there, which was really cool. Yeah, you, you know, I, th- I thought you were, you know, maybe a little bit younger than me. I didn't know that you were only a few years older. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm actually 41. So don't, pr- don't print that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess you can find it on the Internet. There's different places. I think my Wikipedia says I'm younger. But exactly. I'm an 18-year-old, so it's hard for me to lie about my age. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you look you look great. You 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 you're, f- you're fooling everybody. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I get that from good genes. I, I certainly don't deserve it. Right? <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know if uh, Neil um, asked my question last night, but are you Jewish? No, he didn't ask that question. Okay, I <laughs> I know I have the most Jewish name ever. Mm-hmm. Sadie Katz is, is great for Hanukkah promotion, um, but it's actually my ex-husband's last name is Katz, and my son my son's last name is Katz, so I kept it, and because um, I just felt like a Sadie Katz, mm-hmm. but it certainly has um, helped with Hanukkah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Evan, well, to be fair, I don't know if Evan knew whether or not that I was Jewish, but my fiance is Jewish. So, um, I'm, I'm a fan of the Jews. <laughs> I am too. I, <laughs> I, it, all it took for me to, um, to, to like them was to get a podcast. I'll tell you, they are so awesome. <laughs> I know, well, you know, it's like I have this book I got for Han- from Hanukkah from my sister-in-law, my future sister-in-law. Mm-hmm. It was like called, um, I think it's called like absolutely Jewish or something. Right. It says like, you know, 80% of, of book buyers of mm-hmm. like hard book print are Jewish, part of the Jewish population. Um, and a lot of the, the podcast listeners are Jewish. So uh, they are the ones who are consuming a lot of culture. So I'm, I'm very pro-Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> consuming a lot of the culture. That is interesting. That right. is interesting. I know. Is that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. How long uh, did it take to film the movie? You know what? It was done because if you watch it, it's like there's it's, there's like two various stories. There's like the darker, deeper story with, mm-hmm. with Sid. That's much more, um, you know, it sets us up with Robert and Joe um, Ketter where that is. And then we have like the kids portion of us being, you know, bad Jews is going to suffer, which is kind of what makes the movie really fun is there's this, I mean, it's pretty gruesome horror with some really nice comedy. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know. I know on my end, I think I shot for like, I want to say 10 days, but it was like broken up. You know, there was a lot of, there was, Evan did it really fabulous job because we had a lot of obstacles of like still building sets. And, and things so um, and like setting up for the car because we, we shot the stuff inside the car uh, like separately so I don't, I don't know what the full shoot was I just know that it was divided and um, it was over a course of some time like it wasn't you know back to back to back like normal but it was a real labor of love I think and it was I've been out this vision for a long time, and he he really knew what he wanted. I mm-hmm. did like a first cut, like screening of it, and then um, then he recut it. And I really love the finished product; it's a really fun film. Oh, 
all that stuff. That's awesome. Do, do you think because the Jewish people have had you know such a rough time um, adjusting to the world since World War II that it's, it, that's taken quite a while for a movie like this to come out? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that a movie like this, at first, until people really get it, you don't want to... I think there's a little bit of hesitation of anyone to think something like anti-Semitic. So... The thing is, this is like a this is like a Christmas movie that's pro, you know. It's a slasher movie, but I, I don't think it's offensive to Jewish people at all. Not at all. I mean, if, like if, if you're at the screening, people are Jewish, and we're like, oh, this is great. I mean, if, it, it's very. Um, but I think at first, if you go, oh, we're going to do Hanukkah, a slasher movie, people get a little bit testy. But once you see the film, you go, oh. This Yeah, you know, I didn't even know that there was that many um, Christmas slasher films until I until a few years ago when I finally got back into horror and stuff. I was like, man, they've just they've beaten that genre to death. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so many, so that's why it, it would almost be to me racist not to do a, you know a, a Jewish slasher film. I mean, there's it's a huge genre of Christmas horror films, so you know. very first movie Tom Savini ever did um, makeup effects for was a Memorial Day slasher movie called Dead of Night. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Bob Clark directed that movie right before he directed Black Christmas. And there's not a whole lot about that movie written on the internet. I actually reached out to the star of the movie last year for the 45th anniversary. I, I don't even think he read my message, but he might be one of those ones who do eventually, and maybe I'll get to talk to him. Um, cause I'd like to know, you know, about that movie. Cause it's, it's pretty interesting to, uh, make a movie about uh, a slasher movie about Memorial day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think people like any of the holiday pictures or movies are, are, are kind of fun. Especially if you're deciding not to go out for a party, it's kind of nice that, uh, that you know that you can stay home and watch a horror film and themes, and you still feel like you're part of like a collective group. Yeah, I'm thinking. I have an idea for a, a Sadie Hawkins Day uh, slasher movie, where where girl is um, killing all the guys that are rejecting her for a date. Oh, don't go telling everyone that. Right? <laughs> That's a great idea. That's yeah. great. I love that. It's one of lovely. it's one of many ideas I have. So who knows, you know, if it'll come to fruition or not. You just got to stick to one, you know. Yes, I got so many. the the one I the one I really want to make. I've already I've already given that one away too much. I'm keeping that one quiet from now on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the Sadie Hawkins day is great. Call it Sadie. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly why I told you, because your name is in it. <laughs> I know. And when I was a kid, uh, that was like, you know, a, a big deal. So for sure, is everyone would call me Sadie Hawkins, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we never particularly had a Sadie Hawkins day at any of my schools and stuff. Uh, I always wish that um, we did, you know, because every time I asked a girl to dance or something, I always got rejected. You know what? I I feel like anyone who uh, anyone who had a hard time in high school, yeah, it normally ends up having a better time in life. They have a resilient MC. Yeah, I think that is true. Some yeah. of them, some of them turned out to be multimillionaires, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I see. Uh, one of my favorite people in the world um, is in the movie PJ Souls. 
Oh my God, I love her so much. She plays my mom. Yeah. <laughs> Which is super like, oh my gosh. Because she had done um, a favor for me and was in the Bill Murray, the Bill Murray Stripes. my documentary. Yeah. So to actually be in a movie with her where she played my mom was really kind of fun and um, full circle. And she's lovely. I mean, yeah. I didn't get to do a lot of scenes with her. I don't really have scenes with her. She kind of talks about me throughout the movie. But I was there when she was shooting. And, you know, she's got a really nice, lovely energy. And she's a really wonderful person, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she really is. I met her at a convention a couple of years ago. And she gave me a great big hug afterwards. You know, this is before the coronavirus. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, I just, I just adore her. Yeah, um, and also too, it was also Sid Haig and Dick Miller's last movies. I know, I know, it's so sad. I mean, they both did, you know, such a great job, and were really lovely. I feel honored that, that you know, to be part of the last creative things that they did. But um, you know, they're both certainly were amazing humans and accomplished a lot in their life. Mm, was, was Sid on point on this movie? Because when I saw him at one of his last conventions, he just looked like he wasn't doing very good. You know what? He has been in the movie, but it works really well for the character. He's, he's, I mean, if you see it, he's, he's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he's really good in the film. Um, and they shot him really well, and he's just, He's really special in the film. I, I, if you're a Sid Haig fan, you won't be disappointed. You'll be like, wow, he was really a fine actor. You know, I mean, he, he had a career, he had a, a whole lifetime of acting before he started doing horror films, but he's been, you know, amazing for years, you know? Yeah, everything that guy did was great, you know? I didn't even realize how loved he was until after he passed, you know? I mean, he was so he was such a great actor. He was so loved, yeah. Yeah, and I also see uh, Charles Fleischer, the voice of Roger Rabbit, is in it. Yes, and he's a who he's great, <laughs> you know? I, we got such, like, interesting, like, wonderful, iconic actors in the film. It was fun to get to work with them. He, he's a real character, you know? Yeah, I met him at a Comic Con a few years ago, and every comedian who ever told me that he was an odd duck, a curmudgeon, they were right. <laughs> he's just, oh my God, it's just, it, he, he's like, he's, he's unlike anybody you've ever met before. Oh, yeah. He, I mean, he's definitely like, he comes in and, and you just go. <laughs> I mean, you know, Roger Rabbit was, when I was a kid, yeah. It was like the biggest movie ever. So, but he's a real brainiac, and he, you're right, he's a curmudgeon, and, <laughs> and he kind of like revels in that. He loves that. He, yeah. he, he doesn't mind being that kind of. <laughs> I I'm gonna say this in the nicest way. He's like the the older uncle you have that that is super intelligent, and if you're in a good mood, you you want to sit and listen. And talk to him for hours. If yeah. you're not, you're like, oh God, please don't leave me alone in the room with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you would mind me saying that, but he's really, really sharp and smart. Yeah. Yeah. At, at first, I was like, why is he being cast in this? And then I remembered that he was the doctor in Nightmare on Elm Street and, and um, he was the voice of uh, BB in, uh, in Deadly Ble in Deadly Friend, and I was like, okay, he's been associated with the horror with the horror genre. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so what? So um, this virus aside, what else are you working on? Well, I you know it would be really interesting what happens and how quick I'm supposed to do a film with Preston Walden um, in the spring. Um, and so that's something I'm really excited about. Uh, and I have, I have Amityville Harvest coming out by, through Lionsgate through, with, uh, Thomas Churchill. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about that release. And I have another film. <gasps> Um, that a bunch of people in, in horror and, and I can't remember, but I, I'll be talking about it soon when it's like ready to go. Mm -hmm. So, and I also have a Christmas movie coming out. So I have some films coming out. I have a play that's supposed to get, you know, picked back up, um, in when this all ends. So it's, it's, 
I think right now is like just knowing that I have some films coming and then sitting down and maybe finishing writing some things that I haven't finished yet. Mm -hmm. So you take this time to write? Yeah. I mean, once everyone kind of calms down and accepts what's going on, mm -hmm. I, I think it will be much more conducive to being creative. You know, right now it's, it's hard to say, okay, I'm going to sit down and spend my whole day writing on the computer and feel good about it when, like, the most always everyone wants to talk about is like, oh, my God, and the news is still giving us updates. But I think once we kind of go, okay, this is our new norm, is when we'll probably get a lot of really creative things um, out of this and, you know, a time to actually be with our family and play games and and just, we just need like a settling period of like accepting where we're at, you mm -hmm. know? Absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, you know, this will... This will, you know, take the stress off of everyone that's been hanging on the last decade or so, and we will survive. <laughs> we will. Yeah, I mean, we will survive. I think what's scary is, you know, a lot of us with older family members and friends, like, you know, wanting to make sure, sure, uh, you know, that they're okay is really important, and. You know, once we kind of understand where we're at with this, I think next week we'll, we'll know who's sick and who's not, and we'll have a little bit more. It might be a, it might end up being a really great, like, we'll all be forced to be on, you know, house arrest, but we'll also have a chance to do a lot of creative projects that sometimes we just don't have time for. Mm hmm Absolutely. Smoking. Yeah. So Sadie, there's this um, game that I like to engage my guests in. Uh, I wanted to play with play it with you last time, but we didn't get a chance to. Um, what it is is it's silly slumber party questions, and oh great! How it works is I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me the exact same question, and I answer it. Oh, wonderful! Okay, I love it. Okay. Come in. Okay, Sadie, are you ticklish? Are you ticklish? I am just baby ticklish, yes. <laughs> Great. Um, just, what does baby ticklish mean? It's just, I get a knee-jerk reaction when I get tickled. Like, I've been known to hit a few people in the groin. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, is your belly button an in the or an Audi? I definitely have an in the and I'm really appreciative for my doctors for that. How about you? Any or Audi? I have a deep any. <laughs> it's one of those ones that's real deep water gets caught in. Great. Oh, yes. I can also hide weed in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's a real any. Good. Yeah. Uh, what color are your toenails painted? Oh, they're, they're painted red, and that tends to be my color of choice. Dare I ask you what color your toenails are painted? They're not painted right now, but last time they were, they were purple with sparkles. Oh, I love you. Good for you. Yeah, I like to go. Lovely. I like to go elaborate colors. Right, I love that. Yeah, I think yeah. that's sort of my like color that I use. But I don't know what color they're going to be when they wear off. It's off to Joe myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is your best personality trait? Um, my best. I think my best. And my worst personality trait is my brutal honesty of how I'm feeling. So, yeah. <laughs> depending on whether or not you like someone uncensored, yeah. um, <laughs> I think that's my best and my worst trait. And how about you? Um, combination of that and my sense of empathy. Oh, that's good. Me too. I'm very empathetic. So I want to take that too. <laughs> I, yeah. I want your answer. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I'm, I'm too empathetic and I'm, a, you know, a crying mess. But I think, it's, you know, having empathy is really important. It certainly is. And then um, my favorite question, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? I don't. Oh, yes. Um, you know what? I, I don't really like garlic in large amounts. It's, uh -huh. 
grosses me out. And it also, like, stays in my pores. How about you? Um, either farts or feet. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, both. <laughs> oh, really quickly, I got a couple jokes for you. Okay. You know the difference between a golf ball and a G-spot? Uh, no. A man will take 20 minutes to find the golf ball. <laughs> I love that. Good for you. <laughs> and um, you, uh, you know how to make a, a, a wife scream twice? Oh. First you fuck her in the ass, and then you wipe your dick on the curtain. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Old, old, old school raunch. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hilarious. Well, Sadie, thank you so much for coming back on. We could talk a little bit, you know, about Hanukkah and stuff. That was pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on, and you stay safe, okay? Okay. And by the way, um, last time you were on was one year yesterday, I realized. No way. Yeah. <laughs> so it's our anniversary. Happy anniversary, love. Happy anniversary, love. You have yourself a great day, and thank you so much. All right. Great. You too. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> well, there you have it. Sadie Katz. Ain't she, ain't she a sweetheart? I love Sadie. She's just a lot of fun and so open-minded, and I love talking to her. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, add me as a friend on Facebook, join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past, because the present sucks. Later, dudes! <laughs>